Hi, I'm Neil Yeomans from Drysdale and District Towing. We're taking this wonderful EK Holden down to Drysdale Smash Repairs for restoration. Uh, this is a community effort to help some younger people learn some insights into the trade. It's a break, it's got three pedals. <laughs> I'm feeling happy and I'm thinking this is going to be so much fun. Well, I'm looking forward to get along more with my friends and I've heard people like my dad's and my cousin have talked about people here. I want to know who they are more. I'm feeling excited really just to start and working on the car. I reckon it will be fun soon. Hello. Hey. Hey boys, how are you? I'm really looking forward to painting is, and um, just looking through the engine as well. The most I'm looking forward to is restoring the whole into its original state to how it came out of like the factory standards and all that kind of thing. I see myself as a, more of a mechanic and on the side as the um, pedal beater on the side as well. Alright boys. Uh, we decided to get involved with the project just because we think it's good for the community, help out the young blokes, give them a, a chance to help out in this project and get to show them what we do. Been actually in the panel beating trade for 15 years now, but probably since I was about five or six I would have started yeah, tinkering around with Dad. Uh, I really think it's a big help for the, the kids and just the community in general. It brings everyone together, everyone's supporting it. Uh, I think it's just a really good thing for the community, getting everyone together. Yeah, I think anyone can do it. I think it's just a matter of having a bit of guidance, showing them through the steps and yeah, I think anyone can have a crack at it. Well, we're just taking off some of the back of the car and taking off. I'm taking off the grill down at the front, so I've been under the car. And um, just taking the tail lights out for painting. All right, so Ethan's taking off the back lights. I'm taking off the front guard, and the rest of them are just taking off nuts and bolts that we don't need on the car right now, so we can get it stripped down. Ow. Hey, Scotty. Hey, Rodney. How are you? Good to see you again, bud. You too. What are you boys doing here? I've got some kids here doing a resto on this one. So we were working and then Snap-on Tools came to visit. Hey, I'm Rodney. I'm from Snap-on. I look after this area. Uh, you guys are going to do a really good job here, so we'll start you off. Yeah, Where's we got that? these caps, as you can see. Yeah. And uh, we also got to go inside the truck and have a look. And there's so many tools in there and just, yeah, so. Maybe he's got to give you a few pointers and um, get her on the road in no time. That was pretty cool. Alright, 
right boys, we've got most of it stripped down. We can probably start sanding it back, get some paint off it, and see where all the rust is. Well, I've started to sand the car with Andrew. Well, the sand is pretty powerful. It's not that difficult. You've just got to keep the sander moving. You've got to keep your face flat on the panel. But that's, yeah, that's about it. Uh, it's probably worse than what we originally thought, but that's always the way. You never know what you're getting yourself into until you really get the paint off and so you have a good look at it. It's had a lot of patchwork done on it before, uh, and it's it's hidden the rust that's underneath it pretty much, so we've got our work cut out for us on it. Yeah, well, if you only do half the rest though, it puts more work on the following people that ever have to work on it. In this one, it's had patchwork just riveted over the top of the rust and just had almost like a sealer brushed on over it. Uh, it's hidden it, and but now we've taken that off, we can see, yeah, what's really under it. We're going to get them all sandblasted, uh, and then we're going to cut the rusted sections out, uh, make up panels that we can, or get some through rare spares to replace and weld them in. Anyone out there that knows of any parts laying around or someone's got sitting in the shed that they don't want and are happy to donate them, uh, would be yeah, grateful to get a hand off them. Well, what we're doing now is I'm taking out the front seat. Um, Cody's helping me get the seat out. Well, there's like so many different sizes and bolts everywhere just to get it out. And then we just worked out one of the brackets we're for. It's actually full of seat belts. And it's really annoying just to get out. And then the seat's out now. It's good that I'm restoring a car like this so we can put it back on the road and do it for the Salvation Army. Um, today I've been working on the front, one of the front doors, taking out the glass and undoing it and taking it basically all out and hinges. It was a bit tricky because like, there were so many bolts but in the end it was quite easy than the uh, back doors. It was annoying taking the door off because there was one bolt down the bottom which I couldn't get off because it was sitting in the wrong spot. It feels like we've accomplished a lot. Today I took the driver window out and I also took the driver door off. The first door I got off the bolt was destroyed, so it wouldn't come off, but we got it off. And now we're trying to get the other one off. But Scott's helping me with that one right now. While I have been sanding the back right of the car, Ah, uh, your hands end up like jelly, but it's not as hard as you think it is. Put it on and it starts just going away. Today I had the wire wheel, which is sort of like a angle grinder type thing that runs on air with like wires on it, on a wheel, and I was getting all the rust off from where the windows and stuff are. And today was a special day because we have the surf junction cam. While it was put up on top of the stairs, you could see everything that was happening on the car. The surf junction camera is good for having here because it's tough and sturdy. Today I started to uh, scrub the chrome bits of the car with steel wool. Getting it ready to do the other process of chroming it, putting chrome on it. We're finishing sanding and grinding and that's what we're really doing right now. Hello boys, this is Adam from the Body Shop. He's coming to have a look at the car. 
Well, we're going to um, visit from Adam from the Body Shop today. My name's Adam Guillaume and I own Body Shop Paint Supplies in Geelong here. Um, and we're donating all the, uh, the paint and materials for, for the project. So, yeah, it's a good cause and we're yeah, more than happy to do it. He said the paint was worth $2,000. And he gave us these hats, a t-shirt, and he is giving us $2,000 worth of paint for the car. So all the, like all the stuff they're going to put on it from bare metal upwards. So all the, the primers and sealers and, and all that, including the top coats. It would probably be somewhere around about the $2,000 mark, $2,500. It makes me feel good because I know that someone out there wants to help. And it's pretty good. Uh, we got to look at this EH holder. Yeah, it looks cool. I like the paint job on it because it's got this, like, the sparkly roof. And Adam did it himself, so that makes it that bit better. It's a De Beer blue base coat with House of Colour chrome scallops and metal flake and the rest of it, so it's, it's not exactly a normal paint job, but it definitely gets a few looks. Uh, well, we work pretty closely with the guys here at Drysdale, so um, yeah, Dave mentioned that, that they were on board doing it and he asked me about it, and I said, yeah, definitely, we'll, we'll get on board and do it. Today, a photographer from the Geelong Advertiser came and um, took some photos of us with the car. We got some tools. Big tools. They're gonna go in the newspaper. Well, it's my first time in like the Geelong Advertiser and stuff. It was my first time being in the Geelong Advertiser. <laughs> Hopefully some of my friends from Grofdale sees it. <laughs> so yeah, because it'd be surprising to some people that I know. Do you reckon I'm a bit shy and that kind of stuff? Yeah. I feel great because heaps of people are going to get to see me. I'm famous now. Uh, that's good. It's good. The kids seem to be uh, enjoying it. Hey guys, run the play guys. Let's get there. Great big smile, boys. Well, I've been using a small sand off to get in the fine edges and where the floor has been. And the uh, side edges as well. Well, we'll continue sanding in between where the doors are. We've had to do way too much sanding on the car. First and fall, first and fall, all the way. And it, it, yeah, considering there's like three layers of paint, it just makes it that bit harder. And you can actually sort of see that you've actually done something because it goes from blue to silver, and you know you've done it. It'll be worth it in the end. <laughs> I've taken the exhaust off today. I don't like the panel beating that much. This project makes me feel that I'm more into mechanics than I am into the panel beating. I'm Ethan's father. But they seem to be enjoying it now. Ethan just breaks his neck to get down here after school at night time. So. Yeah, he's pretty happy with that. I just hope that they stick to it. That that might be the disappointing part, but he uh, has a few dreams about different cars and things that he'd like to get and do up, and, and hopefully one day he may. Uh, who knows where it'll take him. Well, on Saturday, the Geelong Advertiser finished writing our story about the resto that we're doing. It's, I'm not very happy with it because they think that we're coach potatoes, we do it in Dalesford and we're troubled teens. Yeah, it wasn't really 100% accurate. It was a bit of a shot in the dark about some of the information about it. I didn't really like it. Nah, nah. At all. <laughs> Especially that they send people down here to um, take photos and they also stuffed up the name for it for Dalesford and it's Drysdale. And my mum and dad have seen it and everyone's seen it and I'm not very happy about it. It's pretty upsetting, more from the kids' point of view, that you know, the article, they were so excited to get in, into the paper to, to sort of wake up and see the article we've seen was a little bit disappointing. To say they were troubled teens, which they're not troubled teens, they are beautiful kids. I've had out of 
the five of them made four of them at my own house and you wouldn't even know they're there so they are they're good they're great kids i've not been bullied about this article but i'm just not happy about it lots of people see it but who really cares I mean, yeah it's just one of those things that you're gonna have to pass on with yeah i come up here about 11 o'clock that morning they were fine they were talking about it but you could see they're disappointing you know they were disappointed but I'd like an apology if it's written, not a small article. I'd like to see same size article, apology, get the boys' faces back in the paper and you know, they're doing something for the community. We got a visitor today from Pete and Betty. They had donated us $500 towards our overalls and boots and our uniform. Well, I saw on Facebook that Pete was looking for some sponsorship to try and get the, the, the boys some uniforms so that they're not messing up their, their everyday clothes. And I thought, yeah, well, that's something I'd like to try and help with. And so I made a small donation um, and hope that it, it goes some way to helping to, to get the uniforms for them. It's sort of good that now we're going to be wearing something. So no, now we know we're at work. It's good. Um, we've done a lot of work in that car. It looked good before they started. <laughs> They've got a few, a few awkward bits to fix, but it's going to be a good car when they're finished. Today we are sanding the doors down and removing some surface rust from the car from where we've already sanded it. Well, the surface rust is really from the break we've had over the holidays and because like we only come twice a week. They're going good, we're getting paint off the doors at the moment. Just a bit of rust on the lower sections and leading up around the dog leg, so we'll get the paint off and hopefully, yeah, Saturday morning get a few rust patches cut out and make up a few new bits and get them welded in. The kids originally at the start probably thought it's going to be a two-week project and I think now that they see how much time's involved in just getting the paint off a car, uh, they probably feel as though they're doing the same thing every time they're in, but once this bit's done I think they'll start seeing the fun side of panel beating where you get to you know, make up your panels and start shaping. Today we had Lance from Rare Spares come down and give us some parts for the car. That box there is the rubber kit, probably take two of you to carry that. Alright. Okay. We're uh, going to help them out with all the door seals and uh, every bit of rubber that the, the car's going to need after it's been painted. Uh, all the different door seals, windscreen seals. A big company like that, I didn't even think that they would even think about helping out a little project like this but they've jumped on board and it's good for the kids to see these new parts coming in that they'll be able to fit on the car once it's done. Now what I'll do is once the car is painted and it's ready to start assembling, put the rubbers in, I'm going to come here and I'm going to teach you how to do that. So that's a real critical part of the build, right? I was enjoying the sanding but now it's just getting annoying because like every single week we're sanding. What they're currently doing, sanding the car down, is uh, pretty tedious and and boring, but if they understand what the end result is needed for, then uh, that might make it a little bit more bearable for them at least anyway. One of the critical parts is, see inside these channels here? That's where the door seals go, right? And if that channel's not cleaned out properly and painted over old rubbish, you can, you can fill it all in there. The door rubber doesn't sit properly, and then the door won't close properly. You know, you're definitely gonna need the back area. Yeah, I have identified as well some other bits and pieces that we're going to need to help you out with, like the sill panels that we uh, produce. It's going to help Solvery restore a lot. Most of the rubber's perished and some of the spots 
we Ross purchased we need new panels for, so yeah. So that's good. It's good that a big company like Rest Bears is donating lots of parts for a little restoration to the Salvation Army. It sort of makes us feel a bit more important, like these big companies just sort of following the project and helping us out a bit. I think for Rare Spares to jump on board this project, a little community based project, I think it's yeah, really good to see the high up people in Rare Spares yeah, helping out the kids in the project. This is just another one of the community projects that we're happy to be involved with. Today we've been cutting the floor pan out, drilling out the spot welds and hammering out the floor pans. We started this project 18 months ago now and we've just started to pull the floor pans out. You've still got a few spot welds in spots that have just missed, that's why it's hard to get off. They're doing a good job, but I reckon that side, once you get that floor pan off, I reckon we'll be looking at the same same rust problem <laughs> under this side. That will be able to get that sorted. <laughs> That's my dramas. The boys are getting a bit more into it now. Now they're, they're getting into the sort of the hands-on work. They'll uh, have it done in no time. We're going along. We'll probably have this finished hopefully at the end of the year. We had Shane from Soda Blasting come down and sand blast the car for us. I'm working on the car right now, just trying to get another paint and rust off it. So. Like little gaps that we can't get into by hand or sander, he's doing that for us. The primary of coming today was seeing you through Facebook and uh, understanding the journey. I saw them sanding, sanding door jams with uh, sandpaper, so we thought we could be abrasive blasted, it would be a good thing. But Drysdale. rather than bring the project to me, I thought we'll come out on site and the kids get to actually see the process rather than me just magically turn up with a finished product. It's more to come down and actually um, nail it for them, speed the process up and um, and hopefully just get it rolling quicker. My highlight today was the EK club going and bringing their cars so we could see like restored EKs and you know just what they've done to them. We drive it to Queensland We've only just come back from Cowra and yeah, we drive it around everywhere, it's, it's great. I'm here on behalf of the FBEK Club of Victoria. We just wanted to come and support the project, have a look, inspire the boys and yeah, I hope we've done that today. I like them because I always have. There's a lot of different ones here. Yeah, we brought down about oh, a dozen cars and uh, we've had a couple of members come over from Mount Gambia our club so that's good to uh, yeah, give support and uh, some encouragement to the young blokes. So. Yeah, we had problems with it. It's good to see the community come together the way it is and I'll just yeah for the boys I want this car done it's great. There was a lot of really really nice cars and we got donated $500. I just want to say thank you very much on behalf of the Salvation Army for you guys for what you've done and, and for everyone else that's investing in this project because we are about building community and these guys are, are learning some amazing life um, lessons as well as um, practical skills, which we know we'll, we'll, they'll be able to use for the rest of their lives.
this week, Amir Safety and Landing Gear donated shirts, pants and boots to uh, the project for us to wear. Landing Gear is based in Williamstown and Lieutenant Hobbs went to pick the clothes up this week. I'm quite happy we got it now because it's comfy and I'm very happy to have it and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for safety and landing gear. Salvo Rest that was kicked off for 2015 and so far this year we've been getting two mud guards ready to go to the Australian Motoring Festival in Melbourne. Cleaning up all the inside of the guard, we're going to get this guard have it all cleared so when it goes up to Melbourne they can see what this one's like compared to what the other finished one will be like so they can see what it's like to begin with. I feel the progress is coming along well. It's come along steady and strong. We'll get there eventually. So in here, you might have to get like a fire wheel on a drill or something. Well, my name's Reese, and I'm here to help the kids with the EK Holden for the year, rest of the year until it's done, I guess. I don't mind helping people. Like, I'll do the best I can to teach what I can, like, as what I know and stuff. Great. It's coming along. We're at the Australian Motoring Festival in Melbourne. Well, it's the inaugural, uh, or let's just say the first. I don't want to get, I don't want to use big words when a more superlative one would have sufficed. Oh. Uh, but it's yeah, it's the first uh, Australian Motoring Festival. It's kind of like a one-stop shop. If you like vehicles, this is the place to come. Today we're at the Australian Motoring Festival. We got invited by Brian Tanty to come. And we are going to be uh, interacting with people at our booth. At the moment they're working off the photos. We and were walking around looking at some cars and talking to some people about the project. And because they don't know really much about it, we talk to them. This is what we've been doing and all that. Brian taught us some things like how to roll sheet metal and what happens with different implements on when you're rolling it and he was telling us you never know who you're talking to when you're at big car shows like this. So for all you know you could be talking to the head of Holden or Ford or Repco or anyone. Well at first I was nervous and now it's easy to do. It's been good to speaking to people because some people gave us advice about our career. If we ever need help, just give them and talk to them about it. I've been totally blown away with their courage, their boldness, and their personalities even. They've come out of their shells and are really proud to uh, have been associated with these boys. Well, I'd have to say that I'm really proud of what the kids have done here uh, this weekend. They've been great ambassadors for the project and I think great ambassadors for their school. They've uh, really conducted themselves in a very professional way. They've sp spoken to lots of different people. They've interacted with different groups. Everyone from everyday people to millionaires, they've just treated them all the same way. They've been great with um, you know, talking about the project, talking about what they've learned. And I think they've grown a hell of a lot. I, I remember when I first met them almost a year ago, they were just, you know, they were obviously kids uh, just coming to terms with the whole idea of what they were doing and working on the car. But uh, they've really grown. I think they've blossomed into great young men. And I think this experience of this project is going to stay with them for their lives. Thank you, Brian Tanti, for inviting us to the Australian Motoring Festival in Melbourne. I couldn't be more thrilled and excited. 
uh, for Salvo Resto. It's uh, it's not just going to restore cars. It's it's going to it's going to restore lives, and that's that's brilliant. What what could possibly go wrong with that? Nothing is the answer. Well, I'd have to say that I'm really proud of what the kids have done here uh, this weekend. They've been great ambassadors for the project and I think great ambassadors for their school. They've uh, really conducted themselves in a very professional way. They've sp spoken to lots of different people. They've interacted with different groups. Everyone from everyday people to millionaires, they've just treated them all the same way. They've been great with um, you know, talking about the project, talking about what they've learned. And I think they've grown a hell of a lot. I, I remember when I first met them almost a year ago, they were just, you know, they were obviously kids uh, just coming to terms with the whole idea of what they were doing and working on the car. But uh, they've really grown. I think they've blossomed into great young men. And I think this experience of this project is going to stay with them for their lives. Is there anything in particular you'd say to encourage these boys about? I mean, because obviously they've got a long way to go with this car. Is there anything you'd say to encourage them? One of the things you're learning as you go is the satisfaction of seeing it finished. Okay, this is a long way from finished, but that panel's finished. How much satisfaction do you get from seeing that one panel mounted onto the body and in its right place and imagining as your head hits the pillow at night, what's the next step? and it's the next step. It's like the old joke, how do you eat an elephant? One mouthful at a time. How do you restore the old Holden? One piece at a time. As long as you're making progress, you know you're getting there. And then when it's finished, nothing, nothing equals how, just how good that feeling is. Today we've been coming down to Drysdale Motors to work on the motor and Noel Harper, the owner of Repco Drysdale Motors, has been nice enough to let us use his workshop. I don't know what you understand about engines, guys, but do you understand anything much? I know. He, does. he knows a little bit, you know something? We're at Drysdale Motors because they have reconditioning the engine. Now under here, this is our oil pickup, that's what sucks the oil out of the sump. We're not working on the car like sanding anymore, we're working on the motor. And this, this is going to have unusual sizes compared to what you would normally, everything's metric now, but this one won't be, it'll be an AF. They've taken the motor apart, taking bits out of it, and now we're cleaning it up so we can get ready to put it all back together. Today the guys removed the pistons and we've had a look at the bearings. They look really good to me. I, I think we'll be able to put most of the same stuff back, back into the engine. It's not going on there properly. Everything that I've seen so far looks pretty good. Um, yeah, they're, they're all, yeah, that's better. My experience today has been good because I'm pleased that the engine's in the right conditions, not as bad as I was thinking it could be in. We put together a nice engine for them, and I don't think it hurts to um, work with kids. You never know, one of them might be a future apprentice. Today, Salvo Restro is at a historic stand down and let's see what's happening. Well, we've had Eddie from the Sand Down Historic Race Meet contact us and say that he'd like Salvo Resto to come up and be the official charity for the meet. Well, today we're at Sand Down and we're basically showing what we've done and what we're working on and what we're restoring and telling everyone what the project's about, how it started, what it's been like, and the stories that go along with it. The race meet's good. We've seen a lot of old cars and a lot of fairly new ones as well. Uh, walking around, having a look at like the engines of the cars. Probably can hear the cars in the background banging around. Yeah, pretty cool, dreaming. 
Hi, I'm Abby. I'm 16. My first day at Salvo Restro is at Sandown. I'm involved in this project because I like like cars. I'll show the boys how you do it and keep them in line and show them the unwanted the pants on. <laughs> We're about to go into Sandown, onto the track. It's very exciting. Oh, look at this, this is great. Look, we're on Sandown. Look at this, Abby. Oh yeah! Sandown racing. Look at that. Look at this. Yeah, we're going great. Right? <laughs> yeah. 